Good morning, St. Stephen's. Good morning. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hats are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before us, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 68, found in your leaflet. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. <coughs> Father of orphans, defender of widows. God 
gives the sol <coughs> solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to, into freedom. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Zion. You sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was clear. Your people found their home in it. In the of God, in your name, the for the Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord. He rides in the heavens and an ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel, his strength is in his house. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel and his strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reveled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on on you. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters and all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just to let you know, I got hacked last night <laughs> Facebook. You know, that's a real, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta go through all this stuff, you gotta change your password, and I open up the camera and I had some more, said, Facebook message, you've been hacked. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> What a surprise that is. You know, and everything we have, if you are on a computer, is in what we call the cloud. That's right. Our whole existence is in a cloud. We don't see it. It's not visible. We don't go outside, and there it is. <laughs> this great cloud with all of our information floating around inside of it. But it's out there. It's out there. We just don't see it. And in today's story in the Acts of the Apostles, we have Jesus ascending. This is the ascension story. And it's kind of funny. Remember back in the day, candid camera for some of you who were that age? Mm -hmm. Candid camera. And he would always put somebody out on the street doing this. And people would come up and go, <laughs> and then somebody else would come up. And by before you know it, you got about 30, 40 people all doing this. What's going on? And that's how I get to the disciples of like today in the stage reading. They're all kind of like this. This, folks, is the first vestry meeting. These disciples, all staring up in space. The very first church gathering, all staring up into some cloud. And they're told by these two guys in white, stop staring up in the air and get to work. Get to work. And what's the work they start right off the bat doing? Praying. Kind of like I did last night when I put on like a hat. Pray. We pray. That's the first thing these disciples are asked or told to do. To pray. To stop doing this navel gazing. And to pray. Prayer is so essential to the life of the church and to our own lives also. Prayer 
is what we do. We don't pray to get our own way. We don't pray to change God's mind. We pray to change ourselves, as C.S. Lewis once said. We pray to change who we are so that God's word can come and be part of our lives so that we can do the work of God in today's world, in what we see each and every day. We don't pray to smite down the one we don't agree with. We pray to understand more of each other. And the disciples are called to pray. Here, a week, because next week they're going to get zapped. Next week's Pentecost, and the disciples are going to get hit, hit, hit wicked hard, as we say up there. They're going to see fire and Steven Spielberg directed movie thing. Like Indiana Jones, the end of it, you know, and he's up there, he's tied up, and him marrying it in, and the Nazis open up the, the Ark of the Covenant. And all that stuff. Oh, the disciples are going to feel that next week. But right now, they don't know that. Right now, they don't know that at all. All they are doing is trying to figure out is what are we going to do now that Jesus is really gone? He's appeared to them several times. He's appeared to them at the beach. He's appeared to them in the upper room. But now he's definitely gone. And now they have to figure out what are we going to do? And there's many times we find ourselves in these kinds of places. In our own lives and in the life of the church. What are we going to do? And what we're going to do first and foremost is pray. Pray for the guidance, for the understanding, so that we can build this community. And how we were going to build this community. What's this community going to look like? What's the vision? That's the first thing vestries do when they go on retreat. What's your mission statement? <laughs> and how many mission statements have we written? <laughs> I finally got Trinity Parish up in Melrose to take the mission statement from a three-page document, a manifesto, down to like a paragraph. And the basic thing is, we're going to pray. We're going to worship. And we're going to accept all people into this community without any reservation whatsoever. It's a simple, simple mission. It's a simple vision. We're going to pray and we're going to be welcoming. And we may not get everything we ask for. Remember, praying is not getting your wish list fulfilled. It's not like saying, God, here's my shopping list, God. I want all these neat things. The next lottery ticket I scratch, God, trust me, if I win the $80 billion, I'll give some of it to the church. <laughs> Maybe. Like they say, there's no atheist in foxhole. If you get me out of this God, I'll become a priest. I did. <laughs> we ask God to change us. We ask God to help us and to guide us. We ask God for those things which we ourselves are incapable of asking. Above all, we ask God for his immeasurable grace and love. Something we do not have to buy. Something we do not have to do anything for. It's kind of like I just read on Facebook. Somebody came up with a, a list, a laundry list of things you got to do to get to heaven. Really? 
I'm sorry, but as Protestants, if you are a Protestant Episcopalian like I am, you will know that in our theology, that's works righteousness. You gotta do nothing to get God's love. What we are called to do through the Lord's Prayer is what? Our Father, let's do it all again. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are here to bring heaven on earth. We are here to bring the dream of God in existence here on earth. To show that the dream of God is more powerful, more life-giving than the nightmare we have all created ourselves here. The dream of God on earth, which is why we say we are bold to pray. Because we're asking God to do something that really do we want? And I would hope we would say, yes, we do. But that work begins with us. Not with some cloud, but with us each and every day. We are called to bring earth, heaven to earth. Don't worry about the afterlife. That's going to last a long time. Like, a really long time. We need to do the work here and now, while we breathe, while we move, where we can love, and where we can be loved, and where we can show love. That's the power of the gospel. That is the power of the Pentecost. We will new soon celebrate. That is the fire. Turning now to page 358, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, the God did not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a kind of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic. Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form two, found in your prayer book on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. May all be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop, the Right Reverend Kenneth S. Brown, our diocesan bishop, for Bruce Loomis, 
Park Priest, Vestry Group, Liva, Connie, Alice, Lee, George, and Susan. For the Office of Cycle of Prayer, St. Paul's Church, Camden, the Reverend Cecil B. Radcliffe, Rector. For all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for those in the military. <clears throat> Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Russell Nam, Justin R. Hudson, Jamie Grimes, Bruce Carroll, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, Darren Hearn, and John Hearn. And making justice to the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for the following. For those who are sick or with other issues. John Macy, Shirley Dowden, Jean Moss, Donald Frazier, Bar <coughs> Barbara Beigner, Regina Miller, Paula Swift, Dorothy Lomas, Matthew Smith, Michael Cluley, Will Shaw, Emma Fisher, Bristol Kerr, Bobby Sears, Bernie Dupas, Lexi Myers, Laurie Scott, Preston Dowden, and Karen Wright. For good health in older years, Molly Rebels. Give <coughs> to the departed eternal rest. The flowers today are given in memory of Dr. James William Schweiger by Jimmy and Jim Schweiger and family. Let your light perpetual shine upon you. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also come to share in We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. We ask your thanksgivings for the baptism of Bill Shaw. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. We guide not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his court.
great thanksgiving is Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And you lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
the people of God. Take then in remembrance Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and promise with you.
65 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. May the name of you all. Amen. We have finally rescheduled the yard cleanup that we were originally supposed to do to this Wednesday at 3 o'clock. And, and yeah, I know some of us work, so <laughs> once it don't work, come help. <laughs> there you go. Um, our church picnic is going to be June 11th, and I'll have all the um, sign up sheets next Sunday because we're going to make it a cover dish. And then in the parish hall, in the uh, piano, is a couple of boxes of Girl Scout cookies. Uh, the Girl Scouts used the hall Friday and they left their um, cookies that were unopened for us to share, so help yourself. And then next Sunday, if you have red because of Pentecost, we encourage you to wear red. You can do it. 